documents uh, as to which you claim an attorney-client privilege or attorney-client <coughs> product privilege? Can you identify, at least by category, the nature of documents that have been withheld uh, under claim of privilege? I can identify in general the nature of the documents. I don't have a list in, in mind. First, notes of attorneys, uh, whether they reflect research or interviews with the clients or interviews with actual or potential witnesses. Second, all documents, notes, communication, notes, correspondence, or otherwise that reflect communications between uh, any lawyer of my firm and uh, Mr. Walsh. And third, uh, any communications between or any documents, notes, correspondence, or otherwise that reflect communications between attorneys of my firm and people who are uh, presently engaged as consultants and have not yet been formally uh, designated to uh, testify as expert witnesses in the case. I think that covers the categories. All right. Let me just ask a question, if I might, with respect to a couple of documents that have been produced that are part of the documents produced in Exhibit B. I have, among other things, a number of uh, pages out of a daily calendar which have been cut or torn. Um, what what is the uh, what is the reason that that these documents are in the physical condition that they're in as they've been presented, if you can describe that. Those documents belong personally to the witness. Uh, you will have to ask him. Uh, it appears to me that they were cut in that fashion to remove them from a calendar uh, and that uh, uh, no information of substance was removed from, from any of them. All right, let me just ask Mr. Walsh, if I might, about this point. Can you describe uh, each of the documents that are in this envelope that is part of Exhibit B um, uh, are documents which appear to have been uh, cut in a triangular fashion at the top of each page. Why was that done? When I removed them from the calendar piece, I just stapled them together and in order to put them together, I had cut them in that manner. Uh, to your knowledge, in, in cutting them as you did, uh, with the possible exception of a couple of pages which have been produced in Xerox form, was there anything, uh, any writings uh, that were excluded or cut off or otherwise not included in your removal of these from your calendar? Definitely not. And in a similar regard, I have, as again, one of the documents that's a part of uh, the materials that were produced, which I've marked as Exhibit B, I have a bottom half of a uh, what looks like a 8 by 10 piece of notebook paper with some handwriting on it. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, Mr. Walsh or Mr. Bird, uh, whoever would like to answer, uh, can you identify whose handwriting this is on the document? The handwriting is um, John DeBelka. I'm sorry? John DeBelka. And, and who, might I ask, is Mr. DeBelka? My roommate. Okay. Uh, and with respect to what has been torn off, uh, whatever was on the top half of the page, was that information that pertains in any way to the claims in your lawsuit uh, and or would have been responsive to the requests to produce that we filed with this notice of deposition? No, it was not. Uh, was the material on the top of this particular page also uh, material written by um, your roommate whose name I have forgotten? Yes, it was. Mr. Can you? Mr. DeBelka. DeBelka? Okay. But it was uh, relating to something uh, not germane to our concerns here, is that correct? That's correct. correct. Mr. Walsh, let me ask you, other than the documents that your counsel has described as being within the attorney-client privilege or the attorney-work-product privilege, which would be notes that 
your counsel has made himself of conversations or interviews and or correspondence between your law firm and yourself um, or interviews with uh, persons who are acting as consultants uh, in, in connection with the lawsuit. Other than those kinds of documents, are you aware of the existence of any other documents which you believe to be within the scope of the documents that we have requested to be produced other than those that are contained in Exhibit B? Excuse me, Mr. Steinman, that question is somewhat difficult for a lay witness to understand that the general implication of everything we've been doing here has been whether the witness has produced everything in his possession or control. Right. It is certain that your document, that there are other documents in existence since your documents cover the witness's medical records and those medical records are with hospitals and so on. So at least in context, the, the question could tend to mislead the witness and I'd like to ask you to specify, if you will please, whether you whether you're trying to determine whether there are documents in existence which are not in his possession or control, or whether you're simply doing a follow-up to make sure he's produced everything that he has p possession or control of. Yeah, your, your point is well taken, and, and I meant uh, uh, the latter. Uh, what I meant to ask you is simply to close the loop and to make sure from your vantage point that uh, all documents uh, that you have within your possession or control uh, have been produced except for those as to which your client has or your attorney has claimed some privilege. I have no documents that I'm aware of other than the ones I've turned over to you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Steven, may I request please since we've marked the folder as Exhibit B that um, during our first break which will be just ten minutes from now since we've been here since 930 even though we haven't been on record very long that we have the reporter mark each internal document B1, B2 and so on rather than extracting through the course of the day so that we preserve the integrity of Exhibit B as it is now. That's agreeable with me. Um, would you intend that uh, all of the small documents in the envelope each be marked individually as well? I think they should be, yes. Alright, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. We, we can do that at our first recess. Um, <coughs> let's go ahead and proceed with the questioning then, uh, Mr. Walsh, if we might. Uh, first of all, let me ask you some preliminary questions and give you some preliminary instructions with respect to the deposition procedure itself. Uh, first of all, have you ever had your deposition taken before in any other proceeding? Not that I'm aware of. Have you had a, an opportunity and have you taken the opportunity to meet with your counsel uh, at any time before coming here this morning to discuss the deposition procedure? Yes, I have. And did you meet with both Mr. Bird and Mr. Postotnik? Yes, I did. All right. I, I don't want to unduly repeat things that they have already told you, but I want to at least make sure on the record that, that we have a, a clear basis of uh, understanding about the proceedings and how we're going to go forward. First of all, uh, let me simply remind you that if at any time during my questioning of you, you are unclear about what it is that I'm asking you, that is, my question is not clear to you, uh, you don't understand it, uh, it's confusing to you in any way, mm -hmm. would you please stop me and ask me to repeat the question or rephrase it or otherwise clarify it? Certainly. Because okay. I want to make sure that if you answer my question, that you have understood it and are attempting to be responsive to my question. Is that agreeable? Thank you, sir. Um, next, I'll, I will remind you as well, your counsel has indicated to us that uh, you would like to take a break or recess approximately every 45 minutes, and I will accommodate you and ask uh, you and or your counsel to remind me when the time is, uh, is up. Um, but I would also suggest to you, Mr. Walsh, if at any time during the proceedings, whether it's at a scheduled break or not, you need to take a break, you want to take a break, you want to confer with your counsel, you want to uh, otherwise recess, ask me to do so and I will accommodate you in that regard. Is that agreeable? Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> on the other hand, if, if you do not ask for a break and we do not go off the record, then you should understand that everything that is is said here in these proceedings will be on the record and will be part of the of the court or the deposition proceeding is that understood yes sir 
after the deposition is completed, you will have an opportunity to review the transcript. You'd have an opportunity, I'm sure, to review the, the videotape record and the written transcript of these proceedings. As we discussed at the very onset, uh, your counsel will give you uh, the original of the deposition, written deposition transcript. You'll have an opportunity to review it and to correct it, make any changes that you feel are necessary uh, in order to make the record accurate. However, I want to remind you that if you do uh, change in the, in the process of reviewing the deposition transcript, if you do review, uh, change or modify the substance of your testimony in any regard, I don't just mean correcting typographical errors or, or transcriptions that are in error, but if you change the, tr the substance of your testimony, uh, you have a right to do that. But uh, I would also have a right to question you further about those changes or if this matter ever is uh, presented in a court uh, to comment upon the fact that you had changed the substance of your testimony and to point that out to a, a judge or jury. Is that Certainly. understood? You understand yes, that? Yes, sir. Uh, lastly, I'll just comment that uh, in order to make the record uh, as clear and, and as understandable as possible, I'll ask you please to wait till I have completed my question before you answer it. Mm -hmm. uh, and likewise, I will try to wait until you finished your answer before asking you another question so that we have a good record of the proceedings. Is that agreeable? Okay. All right, sir. I'm going to ask you a few questions now about your background uh, before we get into the substance of what transpired that, that brought about the particular claim that, uh, that you have put forward here today. How old are you, Mr. Walsh? I'm 36 years old. And what is your current residence address? 1929 Cypress Avenue in San Diego. How long have you lived at that uh, address, sir? Since December the 1st. Oh, 1988. 1988. Where did you last live before living at 1929 Cyprus? Uh, 32nd Avenue in San Diego. Was there an address there? I don't remember what it is offhand. Okay. Just for sake of the record, um, one of the documents that we have uh, in this case uh, shows an address of 3612 2nd uh, Avenue. Does that, that refresh your recollection? That is correct. And how long did you live at that address? From uh, July 5th until December the 1st. Where did you last live before living at that address? 2279 Sutter Street, Apartment B in San Francisco. How long did you live at the Sutter Street address in San Francisco? Approximately six years. The residences that you uh, had in San Diego, both the one at 32nd Street and the one on Cypress, uh, did you own uh, that property or were you renting? Renting. And is that true also of the uh, uh, place where you lived in San Francisco? I was renting there also. At your present address in at 1929 Cyprus, uh, with whom do you reside? I reside with John DeBelka. Can you spell his name, please? D I B E L K A. And uh, did you reside with Mr. DeBelka when you resided at the 32nd Street address? That is correct. And uh, what about uh, when you were living at the Sutter Street address in San Francisco? Did you reside with Mr. DeBelka or with uh, anyone else? Mr. DeBelka was a resident as well as um, one other roommate. And what was that person's name? Larry Stouffer. Spelled? S-T-O-F-E-R. And was he a resident in that same uh, facility uh, during the entire six years that you were there? No, he was not. And what about Mr. DeBelka? Mr. DeBelka was not an entire six years, no. Were there other persons with whom you resided during that six-year period? I had several roommates over a period of time, yes. Okay, can you recall the names of others? Um, let's see, there was um, 
Nikolai Nicholas. I'm sorry? Nikolai Nicholas. Kathy Gage. Okay. I think those were the most recent ones. Um, over the six year period, I'm not sure I could come up with all of them. Right. <coughs> what is the extent of your formal education, Mr. Uh, Walsh? I have a bachelor's degree in sociology. And associates of arts and social work. Where did you receive that degree? Uh, the bachelor's degree from sociology was received from Trinity University in San Antonio, Texas. And the associates of arts degree was received from Kansas City, Kansas Junior College in Kansas City, Kansas. When did you receive your uh, bachelor's degree from Trinity? In 1976. Where did you uh, grow up, uh, Mr. Walsh? As a child, or as my growing up years, years were in Concordia, Kansas. Through high school? That's correct. Uh, how long were you, uh, well then you went, were you two years at the Kansas City Junior College? Actually, I just had one year there and I had one year at Concordia Junior College. Okay. Actually, it was Cloud County Community Junior College in Concordia, Kansas. Sorry, actually Cloud County Community Junior College in Concordia, Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, say that, say that again fast. Um, all right, and then how long did you attend uh, Trinity? Trinity was two years. Have you had any uh, postgraduate education, any formal postgraduate education following your graduation from Trinity? Not in the college, university sort of situation, no. Um, in connection with uh, your employment, have you had any formal training uh, since 1976? Yes, I have. I have had um, training from the American Bankers Association. Perhaps before we get to that, um, it might be well to have you review your employment history for me, if you would. Um, let's start with the time of your graduation from Trinity in 1976, and would you outline your employment from that time to the present? I worked briefly for the um, state of Texas for their uh, state hospital in Austin, Texas. And then I went to Mission, let's see, Height Savings and Loan in Mission, uh, Mission Can, I'm, I'm sorry, Height Savings and Loan in Houston, Texas. How do you spell that, Height? H E I G H T S. And I'm sorry, that was in Houston? That's correct. All right. And then from there I went to um, so I managed a restaurant in Austin, Texas for about six months. What was the name of the restaurant? Um, I believe it was uh, <coughs> Kentucky Fried Chicken. I'm sure that was in Austin. That's correct. All right. And from there I went to Lafayette, Louisiana and I worked at a um, Judy's restaurant in um, Lafayette, Louisiana briefly. And then I also worked for um, Cypress State Hospital. Um, it's a psychiatric center. Is that in uh, Louisiana? That's in Lafayette, Louisiana. And then I also, at that point, managed my own uh, business. I was a publisher of a newspaper. What was the name of the newspaper? Times of Louisiana Communities also known as TLC. Okay. Uh, from there I went to New Orleans and worked briefly at a hospital there, um, very brief month or a couple of months I believe, and then I moved to San Francisco. Okay. What uh, work did you do in San Francisco? 
I worked briefly for uh, California Voice newspaper, and then I worked for about four years for the Bank of California, and then I worked for a temporary agency um, working for the Pacific Bell Legal Department handling their uh, file room, legal file room. And how long was that? Uh, eight months. And then I went to work for the Department of Insurance for the state of California. Uh, did you have <coughs> other employment while you were in San Francisco? I believe that covers it. And then what have you been doing since you were moved to San Diego? I now work for the Department of Motor Vehicles Driver Safety Division. And have since I first moved here. And I'm going to go back and just cover at least briefly what the nature of your responsibilities were at, at the various places of employment that you have uh, mentioned. But before that, we will take a break. We'll go off the record uh, at this time. Thank you. Back on the record? Yes. Uh, Mr. Walsh, before we uh, broke, I was going to go back and ask you uh, some further information about your job responsibilities at the different places that you were employed, uh, as you have indicated for us. Uh, again, without going into great detail, but at least I can get a concept of uh, what your job responsibilities were. When you worked at the state hospital in Texas, what were the nature of your responsibilities? I was a um, social assistant worker. I think they call them mental health techs. Okay. Um, and when you worked at 